Maybe you never really thought of it in this way, but Christmas kind of has a lot of uh, sci-fi elements to it. You know, you've got these uh, stars that are traveling and these, these heavenly beings going all over the place. It's got a little bit of that sci-fi flair to it. I've always been sort of a sci-fi guy. Let's take a hit series that uh, uh, kind of went off the air a few years ago. It was called V. V was about uh, these alien visitors who came to earth. They apparently said that they came in peace, but kind of like that old saying, you know, beware Greeks bearing gifts, you know, the whole Trojan horse thing going on there. They really had, you know, some other ulterior motives. But V stood for the visitors, so they called them V's for short. Well, here we are on the Sunday after Christmas. Christmas amidst a season of visitors. Uh, The other night for Christmas Eve, we had all kinds of visitors here. I'm sure we've got lots of visitors here today at uh, Community Church. How many of you had visitors for Christmas at your home? How many of you were visitors someplace else? So probably either we had visitors or we were visitors. In the V series, To some, the V's were welcome, and to others, the V's, the visitors, not so much. Well, think about that first Christmas. It was sort of such a time, uh, lots of visitors, uh, some welcome, maybe not so much on the other hand. Uh, The Holy Spirit comes down into a virgin's womb. I mean, that was an interesting kind of a, of a visitor. Um, you got Mary and Joseph, and they go to Bethlehem, and there's this census, and there's no room in the inn. Um, yeah, maybe not as welcome as they would have liked. We had angels and wise men and shepherds who show up right after a baby is born, or it could have been sometime later, at the stable. Were they welcome or, or not? Uh, we kind of you know paint this whole romantic picture. So lots of V's showing up, some maybe welcome, maybe not as much. So how appropriate on this Sunday after Christmas to talk about the subject of visitors. Our Old Testament lesson from 1 Samuel, as well as our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 2, they tell us about two young boys, Samuel and Jesus, And their parents, Samuel's parents, Elkanah and Hannah, and and Jesus' parents, Joseph and Mary, and each of these sets of parents are, are wrestling as their boys are growing up with what it meant to be parents of these gifts, these little bundles they had been given by God? Do they, do they clutch tight and do, do they hold on to them or do they begin to let them go? It's kind of like Goldilocks and the three bears. You know, the porridge is too hot, the porridge is too cold, the porridge is just right. How do you find that, that balance as a parent? The great Henry Nouwen once remarked that we parents, we have to remember that our children, they're only guests in our homes. They are nothing more than, think about this, extended visitors staying there but for a time. My wife and I, we've been kind of going through the throes of that in, in a lot of ways. We have three young adults now in their, in, in their 20s, 24 and 26 and, and 29. And a few years ago at Christmas time, it was all about friends and boyfriends and lots of visitors and late nights and earplugs, you know, when you're trying to sleep because they're up late and making all these noise. And we kind of realized then We better enjoy it now because soon enough the house was going to be quiet. The visitors were going to leave. And you'll wish that you had them back. Most of you know we just got back from out in Vancouver where we were out as the visitors visiting our our new family as we had this wonderful wedding. 
for our son, our 26-year-old son, out there in Vancouver with his Canadian bride. We got to meet all of the, the, the British Columbian family that are our new family. What a joy. We were the visitors out there. And, you know, this Christmas, this morning, my, we flew back, and our oldest daughter and son-in-law flew back, spent a couple days with us. And this morning, my wife had to get up early and drive them to the Grand Rapids Airport. They were visiting with us, and swoosh, they were gone. And our youngest daughter, back in Ohio, pregnant, couldn't even make the trip out to, to uh, British Columbia. You know, she, she is back there. We didn't even get to see her to visit with her for, for Christmas. And so, in one sense, today's lessons remind us of our, of our calling. Sometimes as good hosts, as, as parents, to raise up our children who are merely on loan to us. Here's a question. Do you think of your kids more in terms of ownership or Lonership, and that's not L O N E, it's L O A N, on loan. Are your kids on loan to you? Like, like Hannah, who gave her son up, Samuel, to, to the temple, um, or do you clutch tightly to them? We raise up our kids, they're on loan to us, so that someday the, the visitors will be able to leave home and be good hosts themselves because they've, they've learned from us. That's the first thing that we learned today. Christmas is for children, but kids have a strange way of growing up and leaving, and then either you are the visitor or they are the visitor someplace else. So, so maybe we should talk about the rules of visitation. Of course, there, there are certain things that are expected of visitors and hosts. When, when we were out west, uh, we went back and forth across the American and Canadian borders eight times. We went through customs and through border patrols more times than I can count. We stayed at a timeshare just across the border in, in Washington, and we got to know the border patrols very well. And, you know, there's this whole immigration thing going on with our daughter-in-law moving down to, to uh, Seattle with our, with our son. And, and we were sneaking across wedding gifts. You know, there was all kinds of things going on. And we were like, you know, the Border Patrol, you know, are they going to be searching our car and asking all kinds? So, you know, there's all kinds of rules of etiquette when you're, when you're doing all this, this border crossing. And, you know, when in Rome, you do as the Romans do, you know, when you're visiting somebody, you have to get into this whole metric system thing, you know, kilometers, and, and the rental vehicle, it was in kilometers, and, and how fast am I going, and how many, how many miles have I gone, you know, and, and, and there was, uh, you know, it was seven centimeters of snow that fell, uh, how much is that, I, I don't know how much that is. And, and then when we had the wedding, we had to do as the Romans, as the Canadians did. You know, they have this strange thing where the, where the husband, and, husband and wife, they have this little table up there, and they actually sign the marriage license in the service. And the best man and the maid of honor, they all sign us. We had to do this whole Canadian thing. I've never seen that done in an American wedding before. But, you know, when you're a visitor, you kind of have to go along, you know, with what's going on with the situation where you are. So, so yeah, we're talking here rules of visitation. And as a pastor, you know, I often find myself as the role of the visitor in, in people's homes and hospitals and nursing homes and sometimes even jails and, and prisons. And in all of them, there, there are rules of visitation. You know, you have to show proper ID and you have to maintain confidentiality with all this HIPAA stuff going on. And sometimes you have to wash your hands before you go into the room, or you have to wear a mask, or you go through a metal detector. And you better be careful, you know, what you bring in, and you don't want to get too out of line. You just kind of want to keep it low-key. And most of all, when you're visiting, don't make the visit about you. You know, keep it focused on them. So lots of different things expected of me as a visitor from my host. So I thought this morning we would take our lesson that we read responsibly from Colossians 3 
And we would see there some good, solid wisdom on what we'll call the who, the what, and the how of being good hosts to our visitors. So if you want to look in your bulletin once again, you know, at the response of reading, you'll be able to follow along. Let's do some, just for a little while, some good old-fashioned Bible study and see what practical application this passage from the Apostle Paul has for us. Because folks, today, this lesson teaches us that we are all stewards, and we've been given a trust, and that's the trust of others, visitors, Put into our care, how do we handle the V's, the the visitors that God gives to us in our homes, here, here at church, in our daily travels, wherever we are, let's look at some rules of engagement, etiquette, on how to handle the visitors that the book of Colossians gives us. First of all, the who. And that's not a singing group, by the way. The passage opens, and I just want to read the first several words, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. Folks, it it, it seems to me that we are chosen and called as believers for a purpose. Whether our role is as parents or neighbors or workers or students, whatever the context is, God's Word again and again makes the point clear to us that we are to remember who we are and whose we are. Let's take just a couple of examples in Paul's letters in which he reminds us who we are in a very powerful way. I'm going to begin in 2 Corinthians in the 5th chapter. I'm going to read just several verses that kind of go along there. Listen to the language. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade people. For Christ's love, it compels us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature. The old has gone away, the new has come. And all of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you, On Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Yeah, we are ambassadors. What's an ambassador? An ambassador lives in a foreign country and is a representative of of another country or another sovereign. We are ambassadors. That's our role. It's whose we are, who we are, because of whose we are, that's an interesting kind of perspective to think about this morning as we think about the who. And then Paul gives us another clue in 1 Peter. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Why? So that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles, therefore to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives amongst the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits you. And always be prepared then to give an answer to everyone 
who asks you to give a reason for the hope you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. So we're, we're ambassadors from a foreign sovereign. We're, we're aliens. We're strangers. We're, we're exiles. The message is that we are not of this world. This world is not our home. We're just a passing through. How does that perspective change if we know that this is who we are? I had a friend, Bob, I talked to just yesterday, and we were talking on the phone. He told me about this trip that he took for the holidays down south. And at a gas station, he encountered a, a gas station attendant, and Bob asked her how she was. And she says, oh, I'm blessed. And he said, what a great two-word sermon. He said, it changed my whole trip. Uh, his thought was, why don't we think that way? It seems when visitors were, were sent her way as a good hostess, her, her hospitality as an ambassador for Christ showed up. She gets it. Her perspective is, according to Bob, she knew who she was and whose she was. Yeah, we're aliens, we're strangers, we're ambassadors, we're on loan. Uh, we're not of this world, we're just visitors. And if we have the perspective of, of a visitor, not camped out and permanent, it, it changes how we see everyone. When a visitor comes in here to, to church, we have that fresh perspective of a visitor. We can see through the eyes of a visitor. How should things be here if, if a visitor comes in and if I can see through the eyes of a visitor? How does that change how I reach out to them? So first, the who. But then secondly, after you know who you are and whose you are, comes the, 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 the what. So let's go back to our passage here. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you so that you also may forgive. And above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in this one body. And be Thankful, Paul says. Yeah, we get to hear about the clothing of the faith here, the, the what. What should we be doing as good hosts who expect the Lord to send us visitors? You know, I, I watched this, this show uh, a while back on the travel channel. It was called Meet the Natives. And it was about this native culture in the South Pacific on this island called Tana. And they there barely go around in loincloths, and they're very unselfconscious, they're, they're very primitive, but the chief decided to send five ambassadors from his little island to America with a message of peace. So they sent these five ambassadors to these five American families to their homes. One was a Montana ranch. The second was a Hollywood, L.A., kind of like a movie star's home. The third was a New York City um, apartment. The fourth was Mid-America and Peoria, Illinois. And the final one was, was a military family down in Georgia in the south. And, and though they were visitors, and, and though they tended to live their life unclothed in their own culture, nevertheless, their lives were so impressively clothed with the qualities that we just mentioned in these verses that it was so glaringly and appealingly evident it exemplified to their hosts the true meaning of hospitality. Folks, 
as we think about our own children, as we think about the visitors in our own lives that are on loan to us, how valuable these principles are. They are the outer life, the the clothing of the faith that we have to practically live out so that the visitors that God gives us can see who we are and whose we are. They do that by seeing the what, these qualities that are mentioned. So the, the who and the what, and finally comes the how. How do we find the strength, the the wherewithal to live such a life? The power to be what Paul talks about here. We read in verses 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. You know, folks, there's a yin and a yang with with everything. And if the Apostle Paul told us the what, so Paul also is going to tell us to not just look on the outside, but we need to look on the inside because there's got to be some substance more than just style. So Paul tells us how to foster an inner life. It seems the outer life, the clothing of the faith that everybody gets to see, these wonderful qualities, they come from a rich inner life. So Paul says here, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You know, as we prepare for a new year, how important that we prepare for the visitors that God is going to bring our way into our houses, into this house, God's house. How important that we are preparing that our inner houses are in order as well. The word dwelling in us richly is the way that we accomplish that. It can help us to be able to sweep clean all of the the dusty corners and the unkept parts of our inner life. Now is a good time as you begin a new year to recommit to a plan to begin 2016. For instance, by reading the Bible in a year to let the Word dwell in you richly. Thy word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee, says Psalm 119, verse 11. When we've squirreled away God's word and we're reading it, it's going to dwell in us so richly that some of these other things, these unwanted visitors, can't find their way in. And then he says, in gratitude, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. And again, Paul reminds us here as we end a year and begin a new one about the regular practice and discipline of worship. If you're you're coming once a quarter, how about try coming once a month? Or if you're coming once a month, how about try coming twice a month? Become more regular in your worship because is it any wonder that unwelcome visitors begin to show up in our lives, visitors that we don't really want if we are not regularly worshiping with God. These are good reminders to us about the kinds of visitors that we want in our life. So as we wrap up here this morning, all of these things remind us, folks, about the prospect of a new year useful rules of engagement for us because we are aliens and strangers. We are ambassadors. We are visitors in a foreign world. We come here this morning not forgetting who we are and whose we are so that we can know what to do and how to do it, all so that when the good Lord sends visitors our way, we may turn out to be the kind of expected hosts 
he has called us to be. Those who show that they are ready for the visitors in their life. Would you bow your hearts with me as we pray? Father, just as we came to Christmas with expectation, we come with expectation to how you might bring visitors into our lives. Will we be found ready? Will we be the kind of ambassadors who usher in your presence into the lives of those that visit? Will we be those kinds of hosts that live out the kinds of qualities that are appealing and draw visitors in to our homes and into this place of worship, this your home, Lord God. In the new year, may we be encouraged to be all the more faithful in your word and in worship that we are not allowing unwelcome visitors in our life, that the dusty and unkept corners will be slept, swept clean because you are dwelling so richly in our lives that there is no room for those kinds of things. Bless us, Father, as we end a year and begin a new one with these things. We pray them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ.